Hey guys, on today's episode of Weld.com, we're gonna teach you how to weld a fixture stand. Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So we asked you guys a while back to uh, submit some video requests for us and you guys answered the call. So we have quite a bit. So two of them that we picked out today, um, we're actually gonna do a twofer. We've got one from a guy named Chuck Payne who wants to see us um, how to make a fixture for various types of coupons. And then we have one from Paul Smith who wants us to kind of do a, go to a, a scrap yard and kind of see what that process is to get materials. And Mike brought up in one of his previous episodes about going to get remnants and practicing on that. But another good uh, task for remnants is for small projects. So if you don't need 20 foot of pipe, you know, going in to kind of get what you need or close to it, uh, it's a lot cheaper that way and it's easier to carry in a vehicle. So we're gonna do just that. We have some material here at the shop to build the pipe stand, but we also have to pick up a couple more pieces at our local steel supplier. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hit the road, we're gonna take you guys with us. We're gonna check out the, uh, the steel supply area, uh, pick up the pieces that we need, come back here and we're gonna fabricate it and show you how to build it. So let's go. Okay, so what I'd like to do is come up with something like Mike was saying, where we have a bunch of adjustments that we can actually make in the piece that we're gonna be working on. So, and something you don't need tools with. I know we have some stands around here, but you have to go find the Allen key or you gotta find a wrench to, to yep. use it. So everything, every adjustment is going to be on a T-handle, so you can just reach over, make a quick adjustment, lock it back in place. So Mike, what I'm thinking about is just, there's no reason to overcomplicate this. It should be pretty simple. We'll get a piece of pipe, and then we'll sleeve another piece of pipe over it, probably like a four inch section, mm -hmm. and then we'll have an arm that branches off of that. With a, uh, we'll put something on here to be able to hold the pipe. I personally don't like tacking to my fixtures. Because a lot of times you get done, you break the piece off, you can end up cutting yourself when you're trying to refixture or the tacks, they build up and then you got to do Grind a lot of grinding down. later on. So I think if we, um, we'll come up with a little design to be able to hold all the pipes in place. But this is going to be a, a horizontal arm and then I think we can spring off that with a 45 degree. And then we'll have another piece of sleeved pipe here and a little T-handle and we'll put a T-handle on this. And that way we can, we can adjust the whole thing. So when we have yeah. the pipe coupon up here, um, or the two pieces of pipe, you know, so you can do like a 6G sample. You'll also be able to rotate it down so you can do a 5G, uh, and then we'll build a fixture so you can do a 2G, and then we'll make it versatile for pipe and plate as well. Um, we'll so have let's, to put a T-handle and a bolt up here then? Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get that. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than I'm willing to draw right now because I, I suck at drawing, but we'll go ahead. Um, we have some material here. We'll pick up the remaining material that we need. We'll come back here. We'll cut it down to size, kind of go over some of the dimensions and considerations and then uh, we'll start welding together. What do you say? Yep. We're just making this out of carbon steel. Whatever yeah. remnants we see, guys, nothing special. Yep. All right, so All head, right, over to, uh, head over to the steel supplier. Head inside. All right, so we're here at a local steel supplier. They've got, um, this place specifically has a bunch of different remnants. Depending on the type of supplier that you have, they may not have this. You might have to buy a full stick. Uh, but if you have one of these facilities close to where you're at, it's the best place to go. So what I want to do is I want to find a piece of inch and a half outside diameter, a uh, piece of tube or pipe, doesn't matter, and something that will sleeve over top of that. So we're going to go through and check out some of the aisles and find out the, those two pieces that are compatible. I need about six to seven foot of the inch and a half OD, and then I need about eight to ten inches of the inch and a half ID just so they'll sleeve one over the other. And if there's a little bit of clearance in between there, it's not a big deal because we're going to do a like a friction clamp uh, so we're gonna have a bolt on the back side that's gonna lock everything together so let's go ahead and take a look yep. you guys don't have a lot of money cheap like me go to your remnants and clearance first so this is all the remnants here so like this is this would be good for if you guys have small projects you're working on something you don't need a full stick you can come in here and grab little pieces um, you know to finish up odd jobs and stuff uh, let's see what else Let me get your uh, tape measure, Mike. Okay, so we have um, we've got some carbon steel pipe over here. 
So that's exactly what I'm looking for. I wanna find something that I have like an inch and a half, because these are the shorter sections, inch something and a half like ID. So that's an inch and a half ID. We'll grab this one, um, and then we'll see if we can find, I need uh, longer stock. So that's 45 cents in clearance, so they go by the poundage usually. Well, that's how they go in metal plates. So it's 45 pounds, you put that on a scale and you just times that by whatever. 45 cents. If it's eight pounds, eight pounds times 0.45. It's pretty cheap. Okay. And they got different bins, they got clearance items and things. So this would be a good place to come in if you wanted to practice welding. Um, there's all kinds of plate, scrap. Here, hop in here, camera guy, get yeah. a look. I mean, if, you, if you're pressing bearings in, you could use this for pressing or turning down on a lathe. I mean, there's different things right here. You can knock out bearings with this. If you guys want to do some tubing work, do a little lap joint tubing work. It's better, it's cheaper doing it this way. If you guys want to get, you know, I mean, here's aluminum. If you guys want to do aluminum welding, here's aluminum stuff. You know what I mean? You can use this for beating on, beating on stuff so you don't mess up the carbon steel. You know what I mean? If you don't want to mess up something, use something soft to beat on. I mean, it's better to use this instead of going buying something like new. You don't need to buy something new if you're on a tight budget. All right, let's go find the, uh, the longer stock items. We're over here in the Mercedes aisle, fine stock. So this has got some material here. That's all inch and three quarters. That's close to what we need, but not, it's not gonna do it for us. We gotta find something a little bit smaller. You got some extruded aluminum shapes, different pieces. Let's see, okay, so over here we've got different, uh, we've got some more extruded aluminum, prime stock, they'll cut it to length. So this particular facility, they'll actually cut it down to size if you need it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'd have to pay per cut. We're gonna go ahead, hopefully they'll find something close to what we need, and we can trim it down to the shop. The prime cut means it's, you're gonna get basically pay the top dollar of the steel at its cut, 48 inches or eight foot. So let's see, I wanna find, so I don't want something that's got too big of a wall. So let's see, we've got some inch and a half, 083 wall. I'm just gonna see if it fits. So that'll work perfect right there. So I think if we got six to seven foot here, Mikey, I think we're good. That should be plenty. Yeah, yeah that'll work. We're a little bit over six foot. Okay, so those are the only two pieces that we need here. Um, but I mean, as you can see, they got a, a bunch of different uh, types of materials you can get, different shapes, extrusions. Uh, diameter thicknesses, I mean, pretty much whatever you need. So if you have one of these uh, in your area, just stop by on a Saturday or something, you know, just go check out and see what they got. But um, we're gonna go ahead and pay for these and we're gonna head back to the shop. And we're back at the shop. So what we're gonna do is we have all our material here. This is all the raw material we're gonna use. We're gonna start cutting this up into different pieces. This is gonna be our vertical post. And what I'd like to do is mount this on a base plate so we can attach it from um, this table or take it off and we don't need it depending on what type of video we're gonna shoot. You, of course, at home can make this much longer or shorter depending on the type of your, uh, the height of your table, or if you're gonna mount it directly to your floor or just a heavy piece of steel that'll sit as the base plate. So I'm gonna have, uh, Man Cub's gonna cut off a couple arms that are gonna go about 24 inches this way. One of them is gonna be at a 45, and we have everything that we need to sleeve. Uh, all of our sleeves are gonna be approximately four inches. Uh, so Mike's gonna start cutting that up. I'm gonna work on the base plate, and uh, we'll get everything cleaned, prepped, ready to go, tack it up, you'll get a better uh, idea of exactly what's going on, and then we'll weld it all out, and then we'll, obviously at the end of the video, we gotta test it and make sure it works, right? So, now to Man Cub. I gotta get that. It's just hard to find good help these days. Babe. Do it. And now he's getting now he's getting serious. Action! Alright, so Mike has all the pieces cut up to the appropriate lengths and sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out a base plate to match the whole pattern that we have on our table. Now again, you don't have to do this step, you can weld it to your table. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, you can weld it to your table, you can do whatever you want with it, uh, you can clamp it to your table with a clamp. Whatever the case may be, I'm just gonna drill this out so we'll be able to remove it um, whenever we need it out of the way. Let me show you the math. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I need to find out the center to center spacing of the holes on the table. So one thing I can do is I can measure the outside of this hole and the inside of this hole, or vice versa, inside of this hole, outside of that hole. 
and that'll give me my center to center because they're the same diameter. So if I measure from the edge of this one to the edge of here, that tells me I have four inches center to center. Okay, as I said before, if I would measure inside to outside, same thing, I'm right at four inches. That tells me my center mark because I don't have anything there in the center to measure, I have four inch spacing. So now I'm gonna do the same thing going this way because I wanna make sure these holes are the same. Okay, these are also four inches on center. So now I have my whole pattern, it's four inches by four inches. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and transfer that out to my base plate here. I'm just gonna lay this out and then everything will match up. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna lay out this base plate because I want the, the holes four by four on each one. So I've already checked this plate, it's not 100% square. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all the dimensions from the center because I have enough material here to do what I need to do. Um, if everything was square, I could just set the, the ruler to one inch because I have four inch spacing and I have a six inch plate and just strike a line this way and that way. But because it's not 100% square, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna find center of the plate and then I will pull two inches up, score a line, two inches down, make a line, uh, same thing for the right and the left side. Okay, so I already have the, uh, the four corners that I need where the holes are gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead, center punch each one, and then we're gonna go ahead and drill them out five eighths to match the, the, uh, the holes in the table. So what I'm gonna do now, this is gonna be a piece that sits on top of this tube here, and we're gonna have a piece of angle iron underneath it, and I'm gonna drill a hole for a, uh, a half inch bolt with a T-handle. That way we can slide the pipe over top of the angle, crank down on it, and that's what's gonna hold the pipe in place. This piece over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come down probably about a half inch and drill another uh, 5 eighths hole for a bolt. And I'm going to separate these two roughly 3 eighths of an inch and weld it to that tube. And that way I'll be able to hold coupons in here. Same thing, we'll be able to clamp on that. All right, we're gonna go ahead, now that we have everything cut, drilled, and prepped, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do some welding, but before we do that, I'm gonna be using short circuit today. As I said, I might have said before, I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna spray down the, uh, the table with some anti-spatter because I don't want all the excessive spatter. I'll have to go back through and grind off the table once I get done. So I'm just gonna hit this up with some, uh, we got some Contesco, it's the water-based kind. You can get this stuff on Amazon, uh, a couple bucks a can, it's not that expensive, but it's definitely a time saver. And you can also spray down your material too, so you don't have to worry about getting stuff all over, your, uh, getting weld spatter on your material, having to do a lot of post weld cleanup. I'm just gonna wipe this all on here. And now we are ready to weld. Okay, while Mike's drilling out the holes, I'm gonna go ahead, this is the, um, one of the pieces of pipe that's gonna slide over top of this. So this is gonna act as my horizontal member. This piece right here, I wanna weld these two together, so this will be my 45 degree kickoff so that I can do 6G pipe. So what I wanna do is I wanna cope out the end of this pipe just a little bit. I'm just gonna dish out this end here and this one here so that these two will lock in. And if I have a little bit of a gap, it's not gonna be a big deal because I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use MIG welding to fill that in, but I want a, I want a tighter gap than that. So I'm just gonna dish this out, kind of profile it, clean these two pieces up to where they'll be able to fit. We'll get everything else deburred, cleaned up, uh, get the mill scale off the areas we're gonna weld, and then we'll go ahead and weld them out. For this, I'm going to use this regular uh, a Zerk wheel that I have on the grinder, um, and that should be able to dish it out. I'm not doing a whole lot of grinding on here, so I don't have to take a whole lot of material out, um, but I, it's easier with a uh, Zerk wheel because it kind of cleans and polishes while it's removing the metal. So let's go ahead and get into it. take a 
little bit more out of it, but you can kind of see the concept we're going for. Just gonna dish this out a little bit wider, and this one is probably gonna go a little bit deeper and wider. Okay, I'm just gonna open that up a little bit more on the edges. I think that should be pretty good for what we're doing. And that'll fill in pretty decent with the MIG gun. Okay, so this is the horizontal piece. I have a 90 degree corner or a 90 degree end cut on both sides. And I wanna be able to, for it to receive this piece because I wanna cope this out or fish mouth it to get in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my $1 pipe wrap. I'm just gonna line that up. I'm just gonna make a line all the way around this piece of material about a quarter inch back. For everybody that keeps asking, this is a Mark All Pro and they are available on Amazon. I'm just gonna measure back a quarter of an inch. Take my $1 pipe wrap, lay it over top, square up my ends, and just draw a line all the way around. That should give me a quarter inch back on both ends. All right, let's get the uh, porta band and we're gonna make a couple cuts. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is I'm just laying the porta band completely flat against the pipe material. I have my quarter inch line right here, the blade sitting right on top of it. Tool rest is up against the material. We'll pull the trigger and just let the, the blade come off and kind of do what it naturally wants to do. And I'm just gonna do a slow, steady pull, and it's basically gonna cut a, a dish shape out of here. I'll then rotate the pipe 180 degrees, do the same thing on the back side, and it should give us a decent cope. We'll clean the rest of it up with the uh, Zerk wheel. I got a nice little dish here. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees, do the same thing on the other side. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that. Like I said, this isn't very precise, but if, uh, if it was something precise, I would go ahead and mark out the top and the bottom so that they're 100% vertical, so that when you flip it around, uh, you get a good starting point. Okay, now we got both of those ends coped out. The pipe's not gonna fit in there just yet because I need to take out these corners right here. So I'm just gonna smooth these out a little bit and we're just gonna hit it with the grinder and just keep checking it until this thing, uh, we get a pretty decent fit on there. Okay, so I think that's gonna work for us. It's pretty smooth, tight all the way around. Uh, we'll go ahead and get these cleaned off and I think we're ready to start uh, tacking the nuts on for the, uh, the friction connections and then we'll start welding it up. Okay, so these nuts and bolts have a coating on them. I'm not doing any welding on the bolt, but I do want to take that coating off the nut, so I'm just going to Clamp this in a uh, <clears throat> pair of vice grips so I can get a manageable hold on it and clean this up with a Zerk wheel. That way when I weld it to the steel, I don't have to worry about that contamination, getting porosity and all that good stuff. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna drop this bolt in the hole. It's nice having these little uh, tables, fab tables. They already have holes pre-drilled in them. I'm not gonna get too technical with this. I've got a 5 8 hole, I've got a half inch bolt. So I'll have a 16th inch clearance all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find kind of center where that is so the bolt's not rubbing up against the side. And I'm gonna lock that down with the, uh, the third hand we made and just get a couple tacks on there, make sure the bolt will go in and out smoothly. Um, and then we can do a little bit more welding on it. Now, if the bolt is wedged up against the side of the plate too much, you're not gonna be able to get that bolt in and out effectively. And I'll show you, I'll show you uh, an example of that here in a minute. All right, so what you want is clearance all the way around. If this bolt is hard up one way or the other, top, bottom, left, right, doesn't matter. If it's hard up and you weld it in there, you're not getting that bolt back out. And if you do, you're gonna strip it. So just try to get that as centered as possible before you tack it in there. Just wanna make sure that bolt still spins in and out of there pretty free-like. You don't have to get carried away. That's all the bigger weld we need on there. Just tack on either side to hold that nut in place because eventually this is gonna get stripped out with welding spatter or you know whatever the case may be. Um, it'll be easier to take this nut off if it's just welded in two spots instead of all the way around. That's one done, got a couple more pieces to do. 
Okay, so now we're gonna move on to welding the, the nuts on top of the pipe. So the easiest thing I've found, instead of trying to balance it here on the table, is get yourself a piece of channel iron. And that's how I'm gonna do all these. Just gonna rotate that hole to where it's roughly level. Same thing on all three of these. I'll be able to drop the bolts right in here, get everything centered up nice and neat, and then use, that, use the third hand to hold it in place. Again, make sure that that bolt is sitting roughly center of that hole. That way it doesn't bind up on the edge of that wall. Okay, so we have all the, um, the nuts, bolts, everything's in here. I'm gonna have Mike cut me up some, uh, some square stock that's about four inches long. That's gonna be the T-handle on here. That way I don't have to adjust all this stuff with a wrench. I'll be able to do everything with big bulky welding gloves on, be able to get a, a you know, get my paw on there, tighten it down, loosen it up, whatever. Uh, that way we can slide everything freely. We don't need any wrenches or other tools that we're tripping over and misplacing the shop. You know what I'm talking about. Everybody's had a 10 millimeter socket at one point or another in their life. So uh, just gonna make things a lot easier. Weld a T-handle on there, that way you can't misplace it. So I'm gonna take the outside of this diameter here, which is two and three eighths. My plate here is six inches. Okay, so I'm gonna take that six inch plate and I'm going to subtract two and three eighths of an inch and divide that by two. And that gives me an inch and 13 sixteenths. That tells me I wanna come in an inch and 13 sixteenths from the edge on two sides. And that should equal me out on all four sides. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, have my square set to inch and 13 sixteenths. I'm just gonna make me a couple marks. And I'm gonna take a piece of angle, and I'm gonna put it right up against that red mark. Then I'm gonna clamp it. Along this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Take a piece of plate with the flat edge, run it right up against my red mark. I don't know if you guys can see that because the lighting. But that's right up against that inch and 13 sixteenths mark. And I'm gonna clamp that in place. So now all I have to do is set this on top of the piece of tube and it's gonna center it up for me. So I don't have to sit there and hold it and all that good stuff. So I can set this right up here on this tube and then I'll be able to tack it in place. Set it on here just like this. Now it's centered up. Now I'll get a couple tacks on there and then we're gonna check it with a square. Now that that's on there, I can go ahead and take my clamps off and the plates. We'll double check everything that is square and we'll be able to go ahead and weld it out. So on this square, we went ahead and cut a notch out. So once we get that weld on there, we can still double check it. So this side right here looks relatively good. I'm gonna check it from another side over here. That side is actually pretty square too. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack it, double check again with square, put two more tacks on and then we can do a weld out. Yeah, okay, that looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a tack up top here. That looks good there. We'll go ahead and tack that up. All right, anytime I'm doing a short circuit MIG, I like to take some uh, anti-spratter and spray the workpiece and we're working on. That way it gets rid of any BBs, makes post weld cleanup a lot easier. And it doesn't interfere with my weld. Okay, we have the base plate down to our vertical post. So that's taken care of. Now I'm gonna weld the horizontal member. Since I have a four inch tall piece of pipe, and then this is an inch and a quarter, that leaves me, you know, if I do the math, I have an inch and a quarter from the top of the, uh, the pipe to the top of the tube, bottom of the tube to bottom of the pipe. So we went ahead and used the, um, the magnetic shims from Fireball, put one inch shim together, uh, with a quarter inch shim, so now I have an inch and a quarter shim. Set up three of those. Be able to line this up exactly where it needs to be. Get a couple tacks on it, and then we'll weld it out. All right, horizontal piece is done. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna set the, uh, the piece up for the, uh, the 6G, which is the 45 degree angle. So I'll move these shims out of the way. I have some 316 shims because 
Again, I have the, um, I just measured this and forgot. I think it's an inch and a half. An inch and a half OD pipe. Two and, or uh, inch and seven eighths. Difference between that is three sixteenths. So I'm gonna lay this on its side. Use the three sixteenths shims. Set this in here just like that. Give it a couple tacks and then we'll weld it out. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I have this other piece of pipe. Um, I'd still like to be able to use this fixture for doing plate welding as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sandwich two plates together and weld it onto this pipe. Just like that and a little, uh, something to that effect. I wanna hold it about 3 eighths of an inch apart. So what I'm doing is I have a 3 eighths plate with a, just a little bit of a shim that I'm gonna stack in between all this. And just even these out, clamp them together. I'm gonna set these on the pipe and I'll weld the, uh, the two outside plates to it. And then I'll kind of get the end corners, that way everything um, stays intact. I'll be able to pull this plate and that little shim out and I'll be able to accept uh, 3 8 plates in there and work with those as well. So we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stack this a little bit tighter and then we're gonna weld them up. All right, so I got this piece welded up. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock these shims out. I'll go ahead and put a couple tacks on the, uh, the corners, that way these don't spread apart because it's only welded on the one side. And then uh, fix up the, uh, the 45 degree piece for the pipe and then we'll be able to put the whole thing together. Okay, so because we put the shim in there initially, so now if I have a 3 8 plate, I'll be able to go in there nice and easy. I don't have to wedge it in there and beat it. If I would've just used a, uh, that 3 8 plate or whatever that maximum size that I wanted in there, it'd be hard to get the piece in and out. So as I was assembling it, we put the shim in there. Now the shim's out, we don't need it. Okay, moving on to the, um, the 45 degree fixture. I'm just gonna go ahead, I have a piece of uh, one by one angle that I'm gonna lay down in here, tack this in, weld it out, and then this plate's gonna go on top. And that's what I'm gonna use to grab that piece of pipe so I don't have to keep tacking uh, pipe to a piece of plate and breaking it off and everything. So we're just gonna go ahead, uh, weld both of these on, and then we'll do the final assembly. <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna go ahead and make all the T-handles, but before uh, we do that, I went ahead and took all the, uh, the coating off the top of the bolts. That way I don't get any contamination in the weld, not that it's gonna be a big deal. I just don't wanna have the risk of uh, running into porosity and then having to grind it back out and re-weld it. Okay, so everything's fabricated. We have the, the horizontal arm that we're gonna be using that's gonna slide down the vertical pipe. Our 45 degree offset piece. And then this little adapter for um, hooking up plates and stuff. So let's go ahead, we're gonna assemble this. Like I said, you can bolt this to a table. Um, you can weld it to a table. You can put it on uh, the floor. You can you know, anchor it into the floor. You can put it on a pet, you know, piece of heavy stock. Doesn't matter. Um, you know, Whatever's gonna suit you in your situation, I don't know what that is. So this is pretty much the gist of it. Let's go ahead and assemble it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set this on top and this will slide down and then you just take the T, wherever you want it to sit, just twist in that T handle and it locks it in place. Now at this point you can say, okay, I wanna do a uh, pipe or plate or you know whatever the case may be. This will be the one for the pipe. So this one you can screw in. Put this T handle on the back here. So now you can, usually what I do is I weld a little tab on my piece and um, that way you can slip it up in there and then crank that down, but this will go whatever position so you can hang it down here. So you can do your verticals. You can go this way to do flat. You can run it this way and do your verticals, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can adjust this up higher to do overhead and switch this over this way. So I mean, sky's the limit with this thing, right? And then when it's not in use, just push it out of the way. Now for the, uh, the 45 degree offset, Slide that in here just like this, and then your pipe can go up here. Drop this down. Now you can get, get to the pipe. You can also rotate this up here. Drop this down, and now your pipe's down here. So I'll go ahead and get a piece, and we'll show you exactly what's going on with it. Okay. 
All right, so here's the pipe attachment, or attachment for uh, doing 6G pipe. So we've got some six inch pipe here. All you do is slip it between the angle and that plate. Clamp it down and then you're ready to go. And then whatever position you need to get into, you'll be able to work around that. You can swing it, you know, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Um, some four inch pipe, same thing. I mean, it's gonna hold just about any size piece of pipe you can put in there. Got some three inch. Same thing, you can get in here, you can TIG, you can stick, MIG, whatever you gotta do. And then I got some small thin gauge tube here. That'll, that'll go in there so you can you know practice all that. Whatever uh, process position you wanna get into. And like I said, slide that off, get it out of your way. Drop it down, bring this piece over. Well, I'll put it on so you guys can see it. I always like to keep the handles out of my way when I'm welding. Just weld a little tab to the piece of plate you're gonna be welding on. Drop it in there, crank it down. You're ready to go. So now you've got your vertical, okay? You can run flat if need be, or you can just put it on the table. You can run vertical this way, drop it in here. Run it out here. Get into overhead. So I mean, whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever you guys want to get into, you can do horizontal with it. Chuck Payne and Paul Smith, I hope that answers your question. Here's how you would build a fixture stand. You can use this for pipe, plate, whatever position you want. And we also took a trip to the metal supply store. Make sure if you guys want to see any other videos, if you have recommendations, something you want to see, go ahead and submit it through the new weld.com website while you're there, pick up some swag, represent. We definitely appreciate the help and support. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you guys found it entertaining. Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Appreciate you guys watching, man. Until next time, make your world better than your last.